I don't want to talk about the Nets again. I mean, there's plenty of talk about the trade deadline. Who's been traded? Who might get traded? And I think we can save that for tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. It's Tuesday. Tuesday, baby, Tuesday. I don't mind Tuesdays, but took a look at the weather, and it's a warmer week ahead, so I'm itching for baseball. We should be talking pitchers and catchers right now. It's February 8th. We're in the second week of February. We should be getting ready for the spring training opening press conference with Aaron Boone and All the beat writers and reporters down there in Tampa getting ready to kick things off. Another season. Chase for 28. We're not there yet. It is what it is. This lockout is now getting to the point where, you know, it's Super Bowl week. And traditionally after the Super Bowl, sports fans say, baseball, you're up. Batter up, batter up. Baseball, you're on deck, and right now you're not ready to get into the batter's box. Like, I'm starting to worry a little bit. It's not time to panic. I still think that they will play 162 games, but the way that they're slow playing everything is just annoying because it seems like the fans care more than the owners and the players do right now. In this quick, I don't know, 30 minutes of airtime, I wanted to hit on some of the baseball news, some of the baseball topics, and maybe get some calls and somebody else to talk to me about these news items and these things that are floating around out there. So, you know it's suspicious when Jeff Passan hasn't tweeted in four days. It's not great. John Heyman had put out some tweets to let us know about the meetings that are going on between the owners. February 6th, he writes, MLB owners meet Tuesday to Thursday in Orlando where they will regroup. The union expectation is a new MLB offer will come soon. And presumptively, that happens after the owners convene. It's obviously getting late with spring training originally scheduled to start 10 days from today. That was the 6th, so spring training supposed to start in 8 days, just about a week, and that's not going to happen. At 5.30, the commissioner and deputy deputy commissioner met up. There was a tweet from Evan Drellich, Orlando, Florida. Rob Manfred, Dan Hallam, and MLB owners are meeting at a hotel near Disney World. Tony Clark and Bruce Mayer, Bruce Meyer are meeting with players in Arizona today and then later in the week in Florida. Manfred is to speak to media today. <coughs> Excuse me, Thursday. No meeting between MLB and MLB. PA schedule. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. My basketball team sucks. Possibly on a nine-game losing streak. My football team's been eliminated. And all the football teams will be done playing in a few days. NFL will literally be over Sunday night. It's time for baseball. And MLB is hurting the game. They... they they want to go back and forth, and they want to play this negotiation game, but it's just hurting the game. You know, there are young kids that don't understand what they are doing right now. I know when I was young, lockouts for me, they impacted my view of the sport negatively. You don't know all the ins and outs. You don't know the business. You don't know the details. You just know right now, as a young baseball fan, you have a countdown till opening day, and as those days go down, and as we get closer to close and closer to opening day, we don't know if opening day is going to be actually opening day. And that bothers me. Something has to give. I put a deadline on this coming Monday for something to give. We need some positive information come Monday. After they meet this week and, you know, do the little dance that they like to do around every single thing, we need to know something by Monday. I'm putting it out there. By Monday night, I'll even give them. Valentine's Day, we better get a Valentine's Day gift that says MLB and MLB PA are closer. And they just have to meet a couple more times or this and this and this. But I know that's not going to happen. So whatever. In other news, Trevor Bauer, this guy. Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer won't face criminal charges for an alleged sexual assault. 
but he might still be suspended from baseball. Would love to hear some thoughts from Mets fans who almost had Trevor Bauer, who's, you know, who's... Free agency last year was interesting with Mets fans, and then he ends up with the Dodgers, and then all of this stuff comes out. Mets fans dodge one with all of that. But if he gets suspended, if the Dodgers are done with him, Yankee fans, are you interested? I'd be lying to say that I'm not. I I would take a look. I, I understand that he went to UCLA, and so did Garrett Cole, and they didn't get along, I don't know, 15 years ago, something like that. I don't care about that. We need pitching. And clearly, this guy dropped a video today talking about the thing. He's got no problems. He just talked straight to camera for seven minutes. Didn't really apologize for anything, but just kind of shrugged it off. Like, hey, think whatever you want to think about me, but this is done. Here's what I've been up to. I'm back. Don't care if you like me. Don't care what you thought. The biggest surprise for me was seeing a a wedding band on his right ring finger. I was like, I didn't know this guy was married. For a little while, uh, him and his agent had a good run. They had a good uh, PR run, him and Rachel Luba. Thought he might have been with her, but seeing him with a a wedding band, a, a wedding ring on his finger in that video, that was interesting. Did he get married during all of this? He was laying low. I don't know. Maybe he said that in the video. I didn't watch the whole thing. I'm not a big Trevor Bauer fan. I think he's a clown from, I don't know, everything we've seen from him over the last few years. So let me know what your thoughts are on Trevor Bauer. Uh, Will MLB suspend him? It's a little tricky. It's a little different. I heard uh, Craig and Evan talking about, you know, Jose Reyes and Aroldis Chapman. And, you know, I don't know if they even mentioned Domingo Herman, but those are those are different types of things that, you know, that's a different type of situation that those guys got suspended for. And Bauer did miss. Most of the season last season. So we'll see about that. From one potential Mets pitcher or or almost Mets pitcher to a former Mets pitcher. uh, Bad news. TJ Quinn writes breaking at 6 o'clock. During the opening, defense attorney says Matt Harvey will be named as possible drug source for Tyler Skaggs. Says Eric K. Uh, says Eric K asked Tyler Skaggs the night he died where he got pink pills. Says Tyler Skaggs told him those are Percocets I got from Harvey. Harvey will be called as a witness this week. It's on Twitter. Just broke right before I went on. And uh, wow. I mean, obviously, rest in peace to Tyler Skaggs. I remember that night. I went to the Yankee game that night and came home. And I remember that night uh, and the numbers aligning, universe Being aligned for that, I forget, you know, obviously he wore 45. Um, I forget exactly, like, you know, the score or the date. Uh, Maybe it was April April 5th. Uh, You know, I just remember the the stars aligning, Uh, and that's a a tragedy. That's a terrible story. And now Matt Harvey might be implicated in it. Sticking with the Mets here, I have something to say, Mets fans. Tired of y'all Mets. Tired of Steve Cohen. Tired of the Mets organization trying to one-up the Yankees. They're bringing back old-timers day because they want to be the Yankees so bad. Worry about yourselves. Do your own thing. Come up with your own stuff. Do your own things. The Yankees aren't worried about being the Mets, but it seems like the Mets are trying to be the Yankees. It's corny. Enough. We had the kumbaya moment when Buck Showalter got introduced where I was applauding the Mets. Good job, Mets. Our former manager, can't wait to see him back in MLB. No, nah, I'm off that. <laughs> I've got no love for the Mets. I'm not rooting for the Mets. But I would go to this old-timers day. I would definitely go to this old-timers day. I don't think the Yankees have had old-timers day the last two years because of COVID. I think the last one was 2019. So I would go to a Mets one. I've been to a couple Yankees ones. They're always cool. They're always a, a fun day at the ballpark. So Mets, do your own stuff. But if you're listening, put uh, two tickets for me to the side for Old Timers Day. I won't wear any Yankee stuff. I'll just come watch. I just want to see what it looks like. <laughs> Other than that, R.I.P. Gerald Williams, former Yankee. Uh, it's tough. He he lost a battle to cancer, and I saw Jeter put some stuff out. R.I.P. to him. This is Keith McPherson on the fan. Call me up. 877-337-6666. I see your calls coming in. Let's talk some baseball for this brief amount of time. 
Let's take a quick break. You're listening to The Fan. The Fan is on your smart speaker. To listen to the home of New York sports, just say, hey, Alexa. Evan Line is listening. Shout out to Darren and those guys. Uh, I guess I ruffled some feathers with my open. They quoted me, and my quote reads on Twitter at the seven line. <laughs> I'm tired of the Mets trying to one-up the Yankees. The Mets are trying to be the Yankees. It's corny. Mets, do your own stuff. And then it says Keith McPherson on Old Timers Day, WFAN. And now there's a bunch of people replying to that. Like, oh, my God. Typical Yankees fan. What? Tell this this guy. Only a Yankee fan would say that. The Mets were doing this. The Mets were. When was it, when was the last one, yo? Like, <laughs> The Mets brought it back because they're trying to be like the Yankees. It's okay. We see what you're trying to do, right? We we know St- Steve Cohen wants to be the boss. We get it, right? The you know Eric Chavez thing and then the spending and going to get all the top guys before the lockout like the Yankees used to do. It's cute. But, like, we're not competing with you. Like, we're, we're not thinking about you like that. So call me up if you want to tell me something, Mets fans, 877-337-6666. But do it quickly because I'm only on till 720, and there's already a full rack of calls. I see y'all. We're going to get to you in one minute. I love the jealousy right now from all Yankees fans. It's awesome to see. You know, after, it's a, tough for us after right after now, 20 man. 20 years of, like, disastrous stuff as a Mets fan minus 2015 in the World Series. Seeing Yankees fan kind of like grovel to we're Mets Aggie fans right, right now. now. We're, we're agitated. We don't have baseball. We don't know who. We don't have a, our but roster. But even if there was base, even if there wasn't a lockout, Yankees fans don't like to be on the second page and right now. No, not Yankees, New York. Not Yankees here. fans are on the second page in New York. Mm, depends who you ask. Right, right, right now, Steve Cohen you guys are worrying about luxury tax. You're worried about money. Hey, get, unlock the baseball, and then we'll have some actual games to look at. And when the Yankees have more wins than the Mets, I'll be right here on this mic to talk about it. <laughs> That's all that matters. Hey, Maury, out in Belmar, talk to me. You're on the fan. Or Belmore. Belmar is down by me. Belmore is where Maury's calling from. It's nice down there, too. Uh, uh, the pinstripes will fly again, my friend. The Thank pinstripes you. will fly again. Listen, uh, the All-Star game for the Mets will be about, what, an inning and a half with the amount of plays that they could maybe field? No. But no hate toward them. You're right. They are being like the Yankees because they can be. I think what we're doing is we're sleeping right now, but we're a sleeping giant. Let's give this roster one more time. Let's pick up Trevor. Let's see what we got. But I think these owners are greedy. They haven't made enough money the last few years, so – I do think we'll pay one. We'll play one sixty-two for sure. Thank you, Mario. I'm with you. I think I think these owners, you know, they're all about greed and money and all this other stuff. But like, they're also not dumb. They're not going to cut in too much into the money that they make at that gate. Once yeah. the game starts, you know, like once you get into, you know, once you get into the one sixty-two, the money that they make from tickets and food and merch sold inside their stadiums, they don't want to cut into that. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that just getting some normalcy or having a, you know, uh, opening day, a normal opening day, that that gate in itself pays for a lot of those small ballparks. So I could see how these owners don't want to miss those first few weeks, especially the the, 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 the early uh, season down in Florida. Right. But if they did push it back two weeks, three weeks, I wouldn't mind it because we get snowed out, rained out. And you have to go to opening yeah. day here with a full winter jacket, gloves, hat on. Yeah, I haven't missed one in a bunch of years, like ten years. The last few years we missed because of COVID. But it's a, it's a great it's a great thing, a great thing to 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 be there on opening day every year. So looking forward to it this year. Thanks a lot. You're doing a great job in the station. Thank you, Maury. Yeah, opening day is a holiday. Happy New Year. That's what we say with the bleacher creatures, right? The bleacher creatures, every opening day, we say, Happy New Year. It's like a baseball opening festival in the Bronx. Getting ready for another season. Chase for 28. I need it. I'm getting that itch. Basketball right now, I'm not feeling. NFL is what it is. We're down to the last game. I need to be refreshed. And I need to go into a fresh season. Everybody, O and O, 
not knowing who is who and what is what, much to be seen. They got to get it done, man. Unlock the baseball. This is Keith McPherson on The Fan. We got to take a quick break. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. The Fan is your station. We want to hear from you. Call The Fan at 877-337-6666. Powered by Superbook. Better odds and favorable prices. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go. The time is burning on me. We've got like 10 minutes here to take a couple calls. Go to a break, then I'll come back and wrap this up. And then Brooklyn Nets Radio will be on. The Celtics are in town to face your Brooklyn Nets coming up soon. And uh, in my open, I said, man, my my football team is eliminated. Uh, I'm obviously a Nets fan. The Nets have lost nine in a row. And then Rich Ackerman just reminded me that my Devils have lost seven in a row. That's why I need baseball. (laughs) That's why I need them to unlock the baseball. And now I got all these corny Mets fans in my mention. Stop tweeting about me. Stop talking about me online. <laughs> Let's go to the phones, man. Andrew is out in Shirley. What's up, Andrew? You're on the fan. All right, finally. You wanted to get into Mets. You you wanted a reason to get back in the Mets with me. And now you got back into the Mets with me. Uh, we are not trying to be the Yankees on any sense. In any Looks sense like of the way at all whatsoever, we are worrying about building a winner. Old timers day or whatever they want to do to put butts in the seats, it's all well and good. He knows how to make his money and it's a smart move. Yeah, I'm going to come see it. it. I think I'm going to go to that. I want to see how you guys attempt to do what we do. That, <laughs> it has nothing to do with how the Yankees do. You know what we want to do? We want to do what the Yankees haven't done the last 10, 12, whatever amount of years it's been. They do the Mets, that's old regime. But what the Yankees have not done in this regime, and that's win a World Series. Oh, so, along the way, we're going to do some fun stuff. Old Timers Day, we brought back the black jerseys. We're going to do a lot of stuff. But it has nothing to do with saying we want to be like the Yankees. If anything, I would say Steve mm. Cohen wants to be more like the Dodgers than the Yankees. Steve so. Cohen is in that George Steinbrenner playbook. Jack and our whole style stole our whole flow. I can tell. I can see it. There's too many parallels. It's like <laughs> bar for bar, flow for flow. No, no, no. We, <laughs> we're spending money. We're getting who we want, which is something we have been begging for for years, anyways. Um, and in the mean, you know, in the meantime, also making sure the farm and everything in the future is going to work well. Right, like right. Get get Chris Bryant too after the lockout. You guys got to go sign another guy. It. I would love it. Ugh, Andrew, I got to hang up the phone, bro. He's these Mets fans, they, they they get a little taste of what it's like to be the kings of New York. But remember, Mets fans, <laughs> none of this matters until they start pitching and catching. We should be doing pitchers and catchers right now, but, you know, Manfred Ball. Back to the phones we go. Carlos is in Deer Park. What's up, Carlos? You're on the fan. What's up, Keith? It's me again, brother. Spoke to you last night, but you cut me off a little soon before I get... You know, it happens. We got to get to breaks. And depending know, on depending on when I, I get a little second to cut the call, I cut the call. But you're back, no, Lois. You got no, it. No, just give me a minute. I just want to kind of touch base on the whole lockout thing. Honestly, man, whenever this happens, it just comes down to millionaires fighting against billionaires. And to be honest, I'm on the player's side with the whole arbitration thing, the whole service time thing, because... It's true, man. Half, of the, half these guys, by the time they're able to get a contract, they're already either in their 30s or late 20s. And, dude, think about it. Like, Cano, like, that's a terrible contract. Why? Because he went through so many years of arbitration. So that's what they're fighting for, and mm-hmm. I'm with them on that. Me too. But before you – go ahead. Me too. No, I'm with you. I think it's time for that to change, and they have to fight for that. They're, there's yeah. some other things that they're going to fold on, but they have to try and fight for that. Yeah, because to me, I think that's the biggest thing that, that ends up screwing a lot of these young, great players, man, that they're not able to become free agents to a certain amount of years. And then think about it. By that time, you know. You got one big payday. And and the way that things shake out in MLB, you know, that, that payday is not guaranteed with the lockout, with COVID, with whatever. Like, you know, it, it gets a, a little different for, for guys than they might have expected. Yeah. One more thing, brother, before you let me go. The whole Trevor Bauer thing. I truly believe the whole thing, you know, innocent until proven guilty. But, you know, at the same time, he could have gone totally different than what he did today. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, honestly, like, I get the whole, like, Carlton and Evan were saying, like, if he's spiking the football. Like, that was a perfect term. Like, dude, like, we get it, okay? You're innocent. She was okay with you doing that. But 
be more humble about it. It's you know still a mean? bad look. It's still a bad look, and he should have, mm-hmm. like, you were laying low, lay low then. Thanks for the call, Carlos. Like, that's what I felt about it. When I watched it, I'm like, this dude pops up. He's in the gym. He's got his branded T-shirt on. He's talking straight to camera like, you know, hey. Like, he, like it almost was like he got freed. <laughs> it was almost like he was, you know, back on the scene, like, fresh out, first day out. Trevor Bauer talking to his YouTube channel, but no matter what, Trevor, this isn't good for you, and you still could be suspended, and there's a chance that the Dodgers don't want you. I'm not going to say there's, there's a chance that you don't pitch again because I I know there's plenty of teams in MLB that are going to be looking for his services, but I, I felt like that too. Spiking the ball, that's a good term for, for it, and it's like, you know, it, maybe it's not a good term for it because there's no touchdown here. <laughs> that's not a win. Uh, we still have these images of you that we never asked for. We still know this information about you that we didn't want to know. And now you're going on YouTube to kind of flex and be like, you know, attacking the media members that attacked you or all the people online that said things about you. Well, it was, you know, rightfully so. One more call before we go to break. John is in Fairfield, Connecticut. What up, John? Hey, John. What's up, Keith? You're doing a good job. Um, So... Just two two things. I w- called mainly about the Trevor Bauer thing, but I just want to say that I was at uh, Willie Mays' farewell night in 1973 before you were born. And when you're a kid, it's a really wonderful, cherished memory to go to, like, an old-timers or a farewell event, anything like that. And I'm pretty sure that, like, old-timers day, these are things that, like, every team has an old-timers day. This isn't like the mm. only the Yankees have old-timers day. It's like eh, – the Reds, the Dodgers. I don't else. think so. Oh. I'm talking about a full old timers game where the old guys suit up. They go out there. They actually play. Like I'm talking about Mariano Rivera still got it going out there, retired a few years and showing us he still got it. Like that's what the Yankees do. I, look, good, God bless them. Um, let me just say this about Trevor Bauer, because these are the way these things play out with this whole Bauer situation, which is that this woman on some level might have on some level or at some point in time thought, I'm going to get a check out of this. Mm -hmm. So she signs an NDA. She tells his lawyers, I'm not going to prosecute. I'm not going to play ball with the prosecutor. She gets her 100 to $1 million check. She keeps quiet. The prosecutor can't go forward without a witness. And so he, and then he, he's really cocky about the way he's wiggled out of this, a little incident, but I think MLB should throw him out of baseball, not ban him, not suspend him, not fine him, throw him out of the game. The Me Too movement should pick up steam on Trevor Bauer and get him permanently banned from baseball. <laughs> Thanks for the call, John. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but like the Me Too movement, they can't they can't do anything here. If if you followed the story when it first came out and you read the text messages and saw the exchange between this young lady and Bauer, she wasn't uh you know, she wasn't sexually harassed in the workplace. She was was openly trying to find him and get to him and there were even times in the text messages back and forth where he was like, I got a game or I gotta be somewhere, like I, I like I, I don't wanna see you and she kept trying so that's not gonna happen that's not gonna happen and then throwing him out of baseball (laughs) we're putting david ortiz in the hall of fame he's not gonna uh have a problem pitching in in major league baseball like literally this year i think they they might suspend him for some games just because that's what uh you know the league is gonna try and do to make this thing seem like i don't know they're they're punishing him but they already punished him last year he missed a, a lot of time last year uh, we'll see what the Dodgers want to do, too. I, I think the Dodgers might be in- interested in his services. They obviously were before all of this. Maybe they still will be after. Who knows if they have enough pitching where they're just like, uh, we don't need his services, we can move on. But I guarantee you he ends up somewhere. I guarantee you he pitches somewhere. And I, I expect the Yankees to check on it, <laughs> to be honest with you. But as far as, like, you know, protests or, you know, women standing up for this woman that uh, – <laughs> That, that was in this with him, like, that's not happening, and Major League Baseball is not going to throw him out of the game completely. The fan is on your smart speaker. To listen to the home of New York sports, just say, hey, Google, play WFAN. That was my uh, DMX growl. I don't know if you guys got that. Keith McPherson on the fan. This is not KM to AM. This is a quick hit. 
I think we have a couple minutes. I should take one call. The Mets fans are not happy with me, but I'm happy. Why would I be happy about this? Because I baited y'all into this so easily, and I got the attention of Howie Rose. <laughs> and I just replied to his tweet. He's turning up. He said, this is particularly uninformed, ignorant, and a ridiculous take. The Mets have staged old-timers day since their first season in 1962. Eventually, it ceased to be an annual event. But their fans have clamored for its return. One up the Yankees. How? Get a clue. And I said, I mean, I see what the Mets are trying to do. It's cute for now. Baseball's locked out. Keep trying to be the Yankees. Score some points with your fans until we actually start playing games. How many years did the Mets skip Old Timers Day? I'm not going to Google it. P.S. You're the man. Howie, you're the man. I got a lot of respect for Howie Rose. Got a lot of respect for his career, what he's done out here. Uh, no disrespect to the OG. Appreciate you quote tweeting my tweet, OG. Give, give me a follow. I'm just kidding. You don't have to follow me. No one has to. John in Myrtle Beach, go for it, man. You're my last call. All right, man. Well, I'm happy you got me on because I'm calling up to defend Mets fans that are old <sighs> like me and Steve Cohen. And God bless <laughs> Howie for being out there on that wall. My first games that I ever went to as a little boy in 75 and 77 were Old Timers Day games and Banner Day. Man, what a dumb game that was. But we used to be so – we had no history, and we used to bring back old timers from other teams to play. That's how, so we ain't trying to be the Yankees, but certainly in 2022 – the Yankees are going to want to be like the Mets because we rising and you just watch. Yeah, right. Sounds good for now. That's the thing about this lockout, right? The Mets are bigger and badder than ever. But once we get between those lines, things will change. The Mets will still be the Mets. Let's go Yanks. This is Keith McPherson on the fan. Thanks for just listening for this quick hit that I did. I just was messing around, you know. Missing baseball. Can't wait to talk more baseball with y'all. Brooklyn Nets Radio is next. The Celtics versus the Nets without Katie, Kyrie, or James Harden. Oh, man. Stay tuned for that. I'll be back on after the game. I would love for the Nets to win, but I think I got a bet against. I'll see y'all later tonight. Keep it locked right here for the call of the game. And then call me later to talk more baseball. Sports Radio 101.9 FM. WFAN